Hey everybody, Dr. Brett Scher, lowcarbcardiologist.com. Uh, I just finished a workout, but today's talk isn't about working out. Today's talk is about my most recent podcast that I, I posted last week with Dave Feldman of cholesterolcode.com, where we talked about the lean mass hyperresponders with dramatically elevated LDL cholesterol and what this all means. Now, I've gotten some great feedback about that podcast because I think everybody loves to listen to, to Dave Feldman just as much as I really enjoy talking to him. But in addition to the positive feedback, I, I, there was some confusion out there. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes to sort of break down this whole concept of LDL cholesterol, LDL particle numbers, and what it means in certain situations for the lean mass hyperresponder and for the non-lean mass hyperresponder. So a couple quick definitions. LDLP is the number of particles of LDL in our body. That has been correlated closely with an increasing risk of cardiovascular disease. In general, the higher the level of LDLP, the higher the risk of cardiovascular disease. So much so that those sort of entrenched in the, in the dogma and in, in the modern medicine say that it is causative, that LDLP and LDL cholesterol causes cardiovascular disease. Now, personally, I think that's short-sighted because people with very low levels of LDL are still getting heart attacks. Diabetes and smoking, two of the biggest risk factors for heart disease, do not increase your risk of LDL. So it's more nuanced than that. So the next step then is to say, okay, well, what else is it that increases the risk of cardiovascular disease? And a lot of it has to do with the characteristics of the LDL and what else is going on in the body, insulin resistance, inflammation, oxidation, um, so many other things. So then let's take the next step now. Then we talk about this group of lean mass hyperresponders, people who are following a low carb lifestyle, who are fat burners, right? So their metabolism is primarily fat and have a, a dramatic increase in their LDL, their LDLP. Now, what they also tend to have is a high HDL and a low triglycerides. So is that protective? And therefore, the LDL does not increase risk of cardiovascular disease in that setting. I certainly believe so. Dave Feldman certainly believes so. There are a number of other people who believe so. But is there proof of that? No. Now, we can look at different articles and studies that Dave and I talked about that try and correlate if your triglycerides, sorry, if your HDL is high and your triglycerides are low, what happens? And what happens is your risk of cardiovascular disease goes down regardless of your LDL. So that seems like pretty good evidence to me. But here's the question I get a lot, and this is sort of the confusing part. What if I don't follow a low carb lifestyle and I have high HDL and low triglycerides? Is that the same boat? And there's certainly reason to believe that it could be because those studies that Dave and I talked about seem to suggest there's less of a risk. But what's different is Dave's underlying theory, which makes a lot of sense, is this energy model hypothesis, that we're using the extra LDL. We're using the triglycerides, which start off as these VLDLs and eventually end up as LDLs. Because our body's using that for fuel, that's why we have a high LDL. So here's where it gets a little confusing. If we're not low carb, why is the LDL high? We don't have that same explanation. So personally, I'm a little less comfortable in someone who's um, not low carb, who is still a glucose burner, and has an LDLP. But the underlying thing beneath all this is we really don't know. Because people who are fat burners have not been studied. Any of these trials we're talking about, we're not talking about fat burners. And that's why there's so much reason to believe they're going to be different. Their physiology is different. Their risk with an LDLP is going to be different. If you're not a fat burner, Technically, you know, you, in air quotes, were studied in a lot of those prior studies. So even though the risk is lower with a high HDL and low triglycerides, we don't have reason to think it's rock bottom low. So anyway, I may have just confused things even more. My intention was to try and uh, clarify some of the questions I've been getting about my podcast with Dave Feldman. So I encourage you to go back and listen to it, Low Carb Cardiologist Podcast. It's the most recent episode I posted with Dave Feldman. And he's had two others in episodes 20 and 24 where he talks about his energy model hypothesis. But the thing is, when you're burning fat for fuel, you haven't been studied. We don't have long-term studies on you. And there's plenty of reason to believe your LDL is up for a reason. But 
We don't have the evidence for it. So that's when you need to work with a doctor, with a healthcare provider who's going to think outside the box, but who's going to continue to monitor you and not just say it's fine, go on your way, but who's going to watch you closely. All right. Hope that helps. Dr. Brett Scher, lowcarbcardiologist.com. Let me know, as always, if you have any questions or concerns and if there's more clarification needed. Thanks.